Greetings, Soundwave enthusiasts. Welcome to the portion of the show where things change, instead of just swapping out the background like it's family portrait day at Sears. Hang on, I've got some taunting to do. Hi, this is Trisha. We're busy right now mounting a desperate defense against our former employer, so just leave a message and we'll get back to you right after we destroy him. We hope. Oh, adorable. The children of the village are putting on a pageant. Well, no matter, and I can hack the transmission signal from here, as this space car has a bunch of technology that'll probably be unveiled just a few days too late to save the planet. And now, hey! Stay in your lane, Meteor. Enjoy the show. Magic Tavern, a weekly podcast from the magical land of Foon. I'm your host, Arnie Niekamp. If you've never listened to the podcast before, this is everything you need to know. About three years and some change ago, I fell through a dimensional portal behind a Burger King in Chicago into the magical, fantastical land of Foon. Luckily, I'm getting a Wi-Fi signal from the Burger King through the dimensional rift, and I use that to record a podcast I record every week, formerly in the Tavern, the Vermilion Minute Tour, and I would have to hope in the future again, but for now, in the tavern, the ruffled feather, in the town of Hog's Face, in the land of Foon. And I am joined, as always, by my co-host, my magical roommate, Usador the Wizard. I am Usador, wizard of the twelfth realm of Ephesius, master of light and shadow, manipulator of magical delights, devourer of chaos, champion of the great halls of Tarakas. The elves know me as Fiangelic, the dwarves know me as Zonin and Hookstanges, and I am known in the northeast as Gasboinius Maystar, and there are other secret names. Oh, secret names that if you are my roommate and you Ooh. stay up at night, and you try to listen to me while I sleep, I may utter check, one aloud, check, check. but I might get really annoyed because I can hear you breathing. Oh, you're annoyed by my sleep breathing? No, or is no. that just a hypothetical? No, that, yeah, it's just a hypothetical. Oh. Just, just uh, you know, spitballing. You know, Usador, there's something on my world that there isn't on this world called a CPAP machine. What are you, what are you talking about? Is there a condition on Foon where people just sort of like... Because of breathing, for any number of reasons, it could be being slightly slightly overweight, they, like, a jolt awake uh, because they can't breathe, like, many times a night. Oh, certainly. That, that definitely could happen here. That means there's a demon living in your throat. Oh, okay. Is there, like, a non-invasive uh, magical cure for that? There's an invasive magical cure. Okay. I'm also joined by my other co-host, uh, Chunt, the Talking Badger. Mm, dry yourself off, baby. How you doing, bud? I'm good. Um, how are things with you and your boyfriend, Tusador? Going good. Yeah, we've been going out, uh, hitting town, painting it red, you know? Literally painting it red? No, that would be dumb. Wow. Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> There's a thing... Sean, I know I've been here for over three years, but I still, there's so much nuance to like, what is just an expression and what is like a literal fantastical thing that people do. When you say nuance, does that mean that your mother or father had sisters recently? They had? N no, right? Oh. See how you can't take everything literally? Your CPAP machine you're talking about, does that help me see my peppy? Can I see my daddy? Uh, is mean, that what that machine does? Probably not, no, right? No. Sean, do you see what you, you do to me? Are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing fine. I'm a stranger in a strange land. No, you are. It's just, uh, I I don't know if this makes sense. I'm tired of your bullshit. Does that make sense? Is that Does literal? <sighs> is that an expression? I mean, I, I think what just happened is the perfect example. Chun said he's tired of your bullshit. And then you said, is that literal? When it's obviously not. He doesn't think that you're carrying too much shit from a bull around. Hence, the bullshit is you literally calling out. Does he literally mean bullshit? Usador, you asked me to get this bag of bullshit. Well, I need that for a soup I'm making. Oh, no. Wait, that's the soup you've been making? Yes. But it's not for us. Okay. Anyway, um, you know what? Let's get, let's get directly to our guest. I am very excited. It's been a while since we've had some royalty on the show. Ooh. Uh, I have the boy king, Dartholomew. 
Hello, I am Dartholomew the Boy King. Fight to the death for my amusement. Oh, uh, um, yes, sir. Uh, your Majesty, it is a pleasure to see you. Uh, but we have taken an oath that none shall die on our watch. And though we do bend knee before you, we are not of your fealty. Although you are from the beautiful uh, fallen kingdom of Grim Fallon, I believe. Yes, um, because my kingdom has fallen and my armies are nowhere in sight, uh, people don't fight to the death for my amusement like I want them to when I command them. I am apparently just a boy in their eyes, but mark my words, once I rally my armies and return my fallen kingdom to its past grace, ooh, you're gonna get it. Oh, you're gonna get it for not fighting to the death for my amusement. No. Oh, boy. Uh, what is oh. it that you think would be so amusing? about watching two individuals locked in mortal combat. For the tragedy is that one must lose their life. Well, when you're a boy king, let me explain something about being a boy king oh, to wonderful. you. Oh, Thank yeah. You. Please, um, please, boy king, explain this to us. Before I explain to you what being a boy king is like, bring me a squash soaked in rose water. Bring uh, me a squash. I shall do that. I'll be right back. But, here, but I want to make it clear. It's just because Usador is a very good host. And not because he fears me? I, I don't think so. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, when he said fuck, it was so cute. But it was. Mm. I, oh, no, so, don't, don't demean me. No, 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 don't, sir. It's just it's I'm not funny. cute. I am to be feared. Visually, when those words come out of your mouth and your your cheeks are so rosy, it's... Don't, don't, don't talk you? down to me. I am fierce. I am a, I am a oh. venomous snake. Oh, and once I have my armies back, oh, you're going to get such a how do you do? Oh, Your Majesty, I, I must apologize, but they Where's don't... my squash soaked in rose water? They don't have any squashes soaked in rose water. They Fuck. only had this rose Aww. soaked in squash water. You're lucky that's my second favorite food. <laughs> I mean, it probably tastes very similar. Mm. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Just for simplicity's sake, do you mind yes. if we call you Dart? Is that okay? No, Dartholomew the Boy King. Use my full title. Oh boy, if you call me by some sort of cute nickname like Dorothy or Darth Mew or Mew Mew or Mew Mew. No, don't do good. that. No, oh. don't get that into your head. I'm, don't get it into your head. Oh, or oh. you're going to get such a killing. Such a killing. I you know from my experience, the less you want a nickname, the more you get it. Fuck. I, I like Mew Mew, but uh, I thought Dart was cute too. You could just, uh, you know, I could just imagine cute little uh, you being thrown right at a bullseye. Don't imagine throwing me. I am not cute. I am to be feared. I think you're I am cute. a coiled viper. You're cute. You're a cute for coiled viper. Mm, Dart, don't no. have a cow, man. <laughs> don't use my catchphrase. <laughs> I I made so much of my fortune selling T-shirts with me saying, "Don't have a cow, man." <laughs> And I will not have you infringing on my copyright. Uh, Arnie in, in uh, Foon, don't have a cow. The, the boy king is famous for that mm -hmm. phrase because a lot of uh, villagers or peasants would have a cow. I also you... say bazinga. <laughs> oh, wow. So to show fealty to you, you would take their cows and say, don't have a cow, man. Yes, I am the one who has the cow. And people would laugh. I also did a dance called the Bart Man. <laughs> not the Dart Man? Excuse me, the Dart Man. Oh, okay. Spoke. There, there we go. That uh, rose goes straight to your head pretty fast. That's that's true. I do get a bit in my cups when I have so many roses soaked in squash water. Ooh, I love that squash water. <laughs> so, Mew Mew, I noticed Don't you have- Don't stop! I, I'm sorry. Okay. Dart? Are, are we landing on With Dart? Dartholomew the boy- <sighs> Okay, listen. I'm definitely not going with Mew Mew. I can live with Dark. I can, I can live that. with Dark. Okay. You what should, about also, you should you? also be saying Your Majesty. Thank you. As a sign of respect. The boy king. Of course, king. of course. Your Majesty, the boy king. Your Mew Mew's just No. Dark, Dark I, I, I noticed you have a, a, a gentleman with you. Oh, yes. This is my au pair. He is the, he is the one subject that survived the great slaughter. And uh, he attends to my needs. And... Oh, Lord, help him if I get so bored and I make him fight to the death. Which I may. Oh. It is within my rights, but this is my au pair, Bormp. What's up, dudes? It's me, Bormp. <laughs> hey. Is Bormp a, uh, a, your family name or your first name? It's both. It's was, your Bormp Bormp? Yeah. Was it your given name or did the boy king um, bestow that upon you in all his grace and glory? Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, funny story. Hmm. Well, where we come from, it's sort of like, uh, basically like the boy king names everything, so, because yeah. he's the king and everything, so. Yeah. yeah, it's good to be the king. There was um, a year when everything was named Butthead. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> uh, everything's fun with this guy. Um, I love being his au pair. Uh, yeah, so he, he named me Bort Bort, uh, uh, upon my birth. Um, which is, you know, it's a, it's. 
I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. It can be a burden. So wait. But it's fun to have it. So, so wait a minute. So you're younger than the boy king. How long have you been a boy? <laughs> I, I am in a perpetual state of boyhood. <gasps> oh, um, I. You know what? I'm. I'm. I feel you. I'm kind of there myself. It, it, <laughs> yes. Well, I can see from your Ninja Turtles hooded sweatshirt. Yeah. Also, thank you, Usador, for conjuring that for me. No problem. Um, I mean, I'm you, more of a. Raphael, but all right, I'll be a Michelangelo. Wait, let me Honestly, explain personally, this. There's a good ex- explanation for this. When I was born, the prophecy foretold that I would be the greatest king ever to rule al- along the land. Uh-huh. And so a wizard put a, uh, not unlike Usador, oh. put a, <laughs> yes, he reminded me of you, put a, uh, put a time-slowing spell on me so that uh-huh. my reign, instead of lasting the normal 80 years or 90 years uh, that a king would normally live, will... Uh, will last hundreds of years, but it has put me in a state of boyhood. Wow, so you won't grow up. You won't... Well, I will, but very slowly, very I mean, slowly. the won't. big issue, frankly, is just like with with our kingdom, or with the boy mm-hmm. king's kingdom, I should say, uh, because of the great slaughter, there's just... While there was provision made for his care, mm-hmm. uh, there's not that many college students left. Uh-huh. Just to like au pair and everything. Yeah. So like normally it's just like it's like a like a lady, like a pretty lady that like, you know, you had a lot of pretty before the slaughter. You had a, most of your au pairs were yes, like beautiful. fair maidens and they mm. would wash me in various milks. Oh, um, what kind of milk? Sheep, goat, oh. boar, caterpillar, chi- chi- caterpillar, chimera. I actually, this is a funny story. Before I was the au pair to the uh, boy king, I was in charge of obtaining caterpillar milk. Oh, what a wonderful job. Um, I got a repetitive stress injury. Oh, I'm sorry to typically, hear that. That's, typically that's my au pair one. is a fair maiden, but um, you know, we mentioned the great slaughter. No need to yes, keep going yes, over that. Sure. I, no, I, I, I am a, to be fair, I'm not a fair maiden. Guilty as charged, but I am a theater major. Ooh. Oh, that's what I was about to ask you, Bump Bump. Uh, uh, what you said you're studying theater in school, yeah. Yeah. so you are still in college. Uh, is what is your dream in life? Once you quit being an au pair, generally an au pair is only that uh, p- profession for a short amount of time. Right. So I mean, here's the thing. Like, like so, I love traveling. Oh, fun. and I love to entertain. Oh, oh good. so I love the concept of travel. I'm thinking, I am thinking, and again, like, this is just, like, something I'm thinking. Like, I don't, I don't need to choose now. I got a great gig. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the boy king. Sure. I love his. And uh, I tell him repeatedly that if he ever leaves my side, he shall die. Uh, yeah, that's true. He'll be hunted like a dog mm-hmm. in the streets and drug through them, throat slit. Yeah, and I mean, blood sometimes. painting the road. Sometimes I'm like, well, what if I went into the forest? He says, same deal. Yeah. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I'm thinking, like, uh, well, I'll tell you what, like the last like couple of years I've gotten super into like circus skills. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Do you put that on your resume under special skills? Uh, that's, that's all I got on my resume besides au pair right now. Wow. What, what kind of circus skills do you bring to the table? Uh, devil sticks, uh, trampolining. Ooh. Um, I've done some ring work, uh-huh. close-up magic. Could you? Uh, then now I should explain this illusion magic. Oh, <laughs> I don't... Oh. I don't I mean, I, I'm sort of breaking the fourth wall here, but I I, I only uh, know how to do a, I can do a, you know card tricks. It's more like pressy digitation versus yeah, conjuring. Rather <laughs> relative to like making bull feces into a soup. Magic with a C, not magic with a C K. Oh, you got it. Dart, I feel like Dart is getting frustrated. No, well, he and he breaks him. that shit out at parties, and it's fucking embarrassing. I'm sorry. Well, you said I can't ride my unicycle at parties anymore. Yeah, just be normal. Just, I don't know, have a drink and have a conversation. You don't need to be performing. You know, you don't need to be on all the time. I mean, he has been juggling during this entire conversation. Yes, and I'm not nuts about it. Oh, if you weren't my only au pair, you'd get such a killing, oh boy. Now, Arnold, are you familiar with uh, circus skills like the ones that Bomp Bomp was describing here? Uh, Unicycling and trampolining, do they have those things on Earth? Oh yeah, yeah. I I've been to the circus, and I I briefly lived in the desert. You you lived in the desert. <laughs> Just seems like people are into circus skills a little more in the desert. Interesting. Now, oh, when you're in the desert, just so you know, it's just like it's really cool when you light something on fire and throw it. Basically, well, that's fair enough. I can what see are the that. best things to light on fire and throw? 
Well, I mean, first of all, pins. That's the obvious mm-hmm. one. And rings is probably the second obvious one. Petulant servants. Uh, mm, that's yeah. a great one. Uh, I'm thinking like a turkey leg. Oh, oh, boy. I have not lit a petulant servant on fire in some time. Dart. Oh, how I wish I had my kingdom. Dart, do you have any subjects or servants besides porn form now? Well, if you people wanted to recognize the true king and take the first steps to filling this dreadful power vacuum we have, you could kneel before me, but technically, technically, he is my only subject. Well, what about old Lady Gladys? Oh, so somebody else survived the slaughter. Yes, there's old Lady Gladys. Oh, so there's an old lady in your life. Do tell. Well, okay. Oh, God, I didn't want to go here, but... I am romantically interested in someone, and even though technically I am 40 years old, Mm -hmm. because of the time-slowing spell, I am still a boy, so our relationship has had to stay chaste. We call it in food, we call it Milanaka syndrome. How (laughs) tragic. This time dilation has caused thee to be separated from thine lady love. Oh, how I wish to amend this for thee. Would you mind, Dartholomew, the boy king? Would you mind if I looked into reversing this spell and letting you age normally? Well, boy, there's a lot of pros and cons here. Okay, let's make a list. Cons. This is something like, I try and educate him, and this is making a list of pros and cons, rather than just having people fight to the death, oh, yeah. is something that we've been working on together. It's a more productive. way to approach a problem. Yeah. He's also getting super good at hacking the sack. <laughs> okay, while I'm making this list, would you bring me another squash rose, please? Of course. <laughs> Can we see you hacking the sack? Okay, I'll just... I've only seen I've only seen a uh, Prince I'm, Jr. do that. Uh, I don't like having to perform for you. Usually, I am the one who is performed for, mm-hmm. being a boy king as I am. But I'm starting to realize that I don't really have a leg to stand on. So here, I'll do a bit of hacking. Oh, oh, oh. ooh, Arnie, look at that oh. stall! Oh. Up. Wow! Up. Whoa! Up. Oh. Up. Wow! Never there, that's all. That's all I'm doing. That's Never all I'm going to. I'm not going to do anymore. What an amazing showcase of your power! Can you believe the with these skills? Can you believe the number of T-shirts that this guy has sold that say "underachiever" and "proud of it"? Yeah, that is overachievement. For if exactly. anything, exactly. Yeah. A hack and a sack and an it's artist ironic. in the streets. <laughs> that's, that's not very catchy. I mean, it's too long. It's for a too t-shirt. long. But, but, but you know, I'm. That's kind of my thing. So okay, pros to reversing the mm-hmm. time displacement mm-hmm. spell. Uh, I would get to be with Gladys, my lady love, and be my true age. Who I have fucked. (laughs) Yeah, he loves to rub that in. Oh, boy. Damn. My only subject. He did tell me what it was like, though. and That was... You're living somewhat vicariously through this story being told to you? Mm -hmm. It was all right. (laughs) Con. Mm Mm-hmm. Being the boy king is kind of my thing. Yeah, it's I catchy. I mean, and branding is more important than ever these days, especially if you are a, you're trying to move T-shirts. Sure, well, if you're trying to move T-shirts and you're trying to reaccumulate the kingdom that you lost. So I guess I wouldn't be the boy king anymore. I would just be the normal king. Would it be uncouth or gauche of me to ask what you're working with downstairs? Oh, what? oh, uh, well, yes, it would be both gauche and uncouth. And normally, I would have someone draw and quarter you for my amusement. But um, since I am, you know, coming to the realization that I don't have shit right now, uh, I will say that, yes, I have a boy penis. It is a boy penis, so not only legally am I not allowed to lie Mm -hmm. with my lady love, but also just physically not a lot would happen. Also, legally, uh, Chun's not allowed to inquire about it. (laughs) Wait, really? Oh, okay. I am not a legal expert on this world. I am a stranger in a strange land. Okay. I think it's generally considered uh, in poor taste to ask a child about their genitalia. <laughs> but he's not a child. He said he's 40. I would never ask a kid about their genitals. Mm, all right. Uh, I'm 21 if you guys have any questions. <laughs> hey, could you buy us a beer? I don't think I've ever asked you that before. It's it's just dawning on me now that you could have been buying me beer this whole time. I think they've only got mead, but I'll order some. Oh, great. Fantastic. I would love a mead. One. Okay. How many meads do we want? Mead me. Two. Yep. I'd like a unicorn's tear. I'll see if they've got it. <laughs> I can't help but notice the sleeve garters on the guy behind the bar, so maybe he can help you out. God, Wonderful. That's, that shit's gonna take twenty minutes to make. <laughs> Actually, in the presence of the boy king, I'll take a I'll take a kitty cocktail. Do you mind if the unicorn tear isn't muddled? Because I get so bored waiting for them to muddle it. Fine, as long as they put the egg yolk in there, I'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, Usador, you're mostly ordering it 
because it's difficult to make, I feel like. I mean, that's part of the charm of it, isn't it? I tip generously, so it's cool. Oh, great. That's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. All right, well, why don't we take a quick break, uh, and we'll get these drinks, and then we'll learn more about the boy king and his au pair. Hey, sometimes people ask us on Twitter, via email, by staring into a mirror and writing with their non-dominant hand, how can I support the show? And that's often followed up with, I already own all the merch, and I've seen a live show, and I get it. Are there other ways to support the show? Well, it turns out there's a lot of things you can do, and any one of these helps. First, here's an easy one, and if you're like me, you like the easy ones, you can subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. And leave a review in Apple Podcasts. We don't mention it as often as we should, but those reviews really do help. And the Sokial Media Manager keeps telling me, mention it more often, mention it more often. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Also, if there are other places to leave a review, leave a review there. Can you leave a review on Spotify? I, I don't know, but I've got a lot going on. Some other things that help, sharing an episode on Facebook, Twitter, or telling a friend about us, or tell an enemy. You can follow our show and Earwolf in general on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. There's a Magic Tavern subreddit, or talk about us on the Earwolf subreddit. Or some other subreddit that seem like they would love the podcast, but don't shoehorn it into some weird one where they're going to be mad at you. And if you have a few bucks a month for podcasts, use our code to sign up for Stitcher Premium. That way we get a piece. We get a piece. Oh, give us a piece. There is a lot of great stuff on Stitcher Premium, including Offices and Bosses. And use the code MAGIC for a free month to try it out. No pressure. Look, if we're really good about promotional self-marketing, we would be mentioning all of these things, which really do help, like, every episode. But we don't do that, one, because we don't want to be annoying. And also, we mean to, but we get distracted very easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We appreciate every little thing you do to help the podcast. And honestly... I think it's possible the podcast is a thing that will help us defeat the Void, defeat the Dark Lord, get me back to Earth, and then we can start knocking out some of Earth's problems. Earth still has some problems, right? I think the path forward is the podcast, but I have been wrong before. So, subscribe, share, or follow, and I'll see you at the top of the podcast charts. Is that possible? Could we be at the top of the podcast charts? I didn't write that piece of copy, but I it makes me excited. I'll see you at the top of the podcast charts. Am I talk or will will we be there together? Is this a message specifically for wait wait don't tell me? Hey my favorite murder, I'll see you at the top of the charts. Now it sounds like we're not there. Let's all be at the top of the charts. That that's not how it works. Okay, I'm going on too long. Tis I, Usador, and I command thee. Go to patreon.com slash magic tavern right now and become a member and get all of our wonderful bonus content. Okay, so, Dart, I'm just kind of curious to learn more. Like, we, we haven't had a, a boy king in here before. What What is, especially like a, I guess you wouldn't be deposed exactly. You're just... A king without a kingdom, really? Well, temporarily without a kingdom, I like uh, to think of it as. Dude, he's got a kingdom. Oh. It's just there was a great slaughter there, so there's oh. it's, there's just not that many people there. I see. It's just Gladys, us, we're traveling right now, so right now it's just Gladys. And uh. your ultimate Frisbee team. <laughs> Whoa. Well, yeah, but they're like a club team that, wait, I, I, I'm a pretty active on, uh, Message boards, mm-hmm. literal physical These are boards uh-huh. that hang <laughs> in taverns. Boards around so this the guy kingdom. keeps lurking around this board. Yeah, and some of them are dedicated to uh, some of my hobbies, mm-hmm. which I mentioned. On One those of them, message boards, there are sometimes trolls. Anyway. Yeah, oh, so it's funny though. Trolls. Uh, funny story. So I didn't meet my ultimate team on an ultimate message board. It was a message board about frothing. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I got it. Do they have frothing on Earth? I I, I think so. I, that's I think a word you call I heard. it disc golf. Oh, okay. I thought it was a sex thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> for a second. It can be. Uh, so being a boy king is um, there. It's challenging mm-hmm. um, because your whims are constantly being met. It doesn't really allow you to grow as a person if everything if everything you want. Whoa, is given whoa, to whoa, you. whoa, 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 dude! Oh, uh, it's a little harsh. Yeah. Why don't you take a knee? What? Take a knee. I don't want to get out of my chair. You've offended it. It would be nice if someone would bow for me. It's been a while. Usador, you're a great bower. 
Here, your majesty, I kneel before thee, and I swear unto thee that I shall respect your mm. position and mm. your and your uh, kingdom and your uh, divine intervention as a ruler over your land, Grim Fallon. Mm. Arnie, let me give you some advice. Uh, don't mention that he's small. Mm. And don't mention that his hair is weird, okay? Oh, okay. So spiky. I don't think they were probably weren't even thinking that, but oh, that's now all, you put it into their head. No, that's all I've been able to think about this entire time. Yeah, yeah cuz I have so I like I my main question about the weirdness of your hair is why it's so weird. Well, oh god, and again I don't didn't want to go here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we must, one of my boyhood wishes was to have a real live science kit and Oh. I was pouring things from one beaker into another. And As you do. Oh, potions. Just basic, like, trying to transmute lead into gold stuff. Alchemy. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And as science kits tend to do, it blew up with a poof in my face, and <gasps> oh. my face was black with soot, and my hair standing upon end, and while the soot wiped away from my face, my hair has stayed like this. And oh, yeah, and it's pure gold. Doctors have, doctors have been tending to me, and... Uh, but yes, I have the first hair affected with alchemy. Wow. I mean, it's better than before when his hair was made of lead. <laughs> it's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. Um, I, it, it used to be imposing when I was, you know, making people fight to the death for my amusement. But uh, now it's, I, I fear it just looks a little ridiculous. It glistens if you oil it. It looks fancy. No, thank you. You're, you're very kind. And um, I promise that when I do retain my power, you're... Death will be swift and maybe eight out of ten painful. Oh. Bartholomew the boy king. Yes. I have a boon to ask of thee. I have been looking high and low for a pure golden strand of hair to put into my bullshit soup. Mm-hmm. Go on. I, I, the boy king typically does not grant requests, but of all the people in this tavern, you have been the most... <laughs> Supplicant to me, and and the main thing I'm into is it. people who give him requests. So often it's for a free bird. We do have a jam band uh, together. Yeah, we do fun, have a jam. I've, I've had to acquiesce to some of his wants. Mm. I mean, that's what relationships are about. They're sure, about compromise. Sure. So you know, I play bass. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Wow. Yeah. Yo, ma- <laughs> and I play the rain stick. <laughs> oh, oh, wonderful. Yeah. Your Majesty. First of all, I love birds. Second of all. If you grant me this boon, one strand of your perfect golden hair, you would be owed a favor from a wizard. Well, I could wow. use a wizard favor. Y- use and- it or now, what was the recipe for your soup? It was bullshit as white as milk, uh, hair as... Let's not do this. No, okay, fair enough. <laughs> yes, because you have been respectful to me and not called me by childish names and remarked upon about how Rosy and full by cheeks get when I say fuck. Yeah. I will, I will grant you this strand of my hair, in hopes that your behavior will be an example to others who will hopefully bow before me. Thank you, Your Majesty. Uh, look. Oh, it, it, let me just say, because I feel like you were kind of calling me out. Yeah, I was a little, a little bit. Little, Sorry. Feel I mean. a little dunked on. So what I yeah. want to ask is, um, just to uh, uh pay has for call my- out culture gone too far? <laughs> <laughs> to pay for my hubris, um, if you're willing, sir, your majesty, uh, I would um, eat your shorts. All right. I would prefer that you fight to the death for my amusement, but I do think it would be funny if you ate a pair of shorts. Yes, I will remove my shorts and you shall dine upon them, and you shall love every second of it. Yes, and sir. And I will laugh. Oh, this is wonderful. I feel like a boy king again. John, stop being such a perv to this boy king. <laughs> I have on several pairs of shorts. Oh, okay. okay. So no one will be seeing my boy penis this day. <laughs> That's good. I wouldn't eat an actual kid's pair of shorts. We know he's 40. Arnie, can you be chill about this whole thing? I, well, you know what? I don't know. It's hard to know sometimes if it's a time to chill or a time not to be chill. You got any livestock? Because now would be a perfect time to give this dude a cow. <laughs> Can I ask a uh, borp borp? Um, I have to ask. Um, That's my name. Don't wear it. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Piece of shortcut stuck. What's like you said? Trampolining is a big thing. Yeah. Um, oh. Start with the waistband. Oh god. Yes. Oh Ooh, um, yes. Eat that waistband. Mm. Num, num, what num, is num. the um, in all your circus training and all? It's the... better when you soak it in squash juice. <laughs> Hey, sir, would you mind soaking uh, these shorts in some squash juice? Oh, sure. No, this is not meant to be pleasurable for him. It is a punishment. He is eating my sweaty boy shorts. His majesty has because spoken. 
Because he was... Uh, because of his insolence, Because dude. of his insolence. Thank yeah. you. And one. I'll keep eating. I Eat just want to ask, what, um, what's the worst accident you've seen in all the um, circus acts that you've um, seen oh, they're or partook all, in? All trampoline accidents, <laughs> dude. Fucking tramping is wild. R- really? Have you ever tramped? Uh, I'm not a super tramper. I'm talking about boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I think I'm always, always too afraid of hurting myself. Can I say, number one... You have, to, you have to watch out for joints, extremities, ankles, knees, wrists, elbows. That's mm. going to be number one. There is a rule in tramping, and you'll see this on the message boards if you ever go to any tramping taverns. Uh, it's just like keep your crank in your pants. I mean, that's good advice in general. Yeah, but it's especially good if you're tramping because all kind of stuff can go down. Oh, no. well, are you saying you broke your dick? I'm not saying I broke it. I just like, I mean, I was tramping. It was out. Okay. It gets wild when you're tramping. Sure. I think I realize now why um, sex with his old lady was not that great. <laughs> no, it was good. It was solid. Well, uh, it sounds like that dick broke. No, I did pretty good. No, the dick's not broke. Bum, bum. That dick broke? <laughs> no, the dick cool, baby. <laughs> now, wizards especially have to be careful about trampolining, not because of their extremities or their joints. Because their dicks are so big. Well, that doesn't, you can trip right on it. But also, if you tramp too high, You'll fly right into the sky and never come back. Just like Gormpelius the Orange. Oh, Gormpelius the Orange, huh? Yes, he trampolined so high that he ne'er returned to Foon. Yeah, I would never trampoline with a wizard. That's fair. Is, isn't the Orange Wizard the only wizard there are no songs about? Yes, it's very difficult to write a song about them. Or are there songs about the Silver Wizard or the Purple Wizard? Uh, yes, many songs about them, of course. We actually, our band, uh, we wrote a song about the Orange Wizard. But it, I think you are right, um, Arnie, in the sense that it is not, ex- strictly speaking, a song. It's more an exploration of sound. Well, M- Mew Mew the Boy King, it's been a real pleasure. Okay, I don't like Mew Mew, but yeah, thank dude. you. Okay. I, you know what? I have to say. Am I, just... I going to have to make you eat something I've been wearing? Man, oh. you've been trampolining because your chill bone's broken, dude. <laughs> That's true. I, I think I was born without a chill bone. Yeah. So yeah, that shows. So yeah, it would yeah, yeah. I bet what? this dude does ball golf. Oh, man. Ball golf. What a square. Is that literal or is that? <laughs> what a narc. <laughs> narc, narc. Arnie, they're calling you a narcoleptic. Defend yourself. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I'm having a lot of sleeping problems. Wow. You should use a <laughs> CPAP. Wait, do you have those? Yeah. Wait, no. I just heard you talk about them. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Mm. So. I was just wondering, what happens if you get your subjects back? Like, what do you are are you going to use your place in this world to help fight off the Dark Lord, or like, what's your? Well, plan? I mean, I think I'm kind of at a crossroads here. It's a big moment. I can either try and, you know, remake my kingdom, mm-hmm. and continue my life of decadence and following my every whim and a cruel disregard for everyone's health and well-being and, you know, living a life that only pretends to my own pleasure. Or I can take this as a sign. I can take up Usador on his offer of reverting me to my natural age and put my dreams of being a cruel, despotic boy king behind me. I had a good run there. I made a lot of people fight to the death for my amusement. The Great Slaughter was dope. The Great Slaughter, that, that was a hoot. Um, Wait, you slaughtered all of your own subjects? Yeah, in hindsight, bad. I listen, bad. okay? Hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. Right? So goes, so you goes. think here's the thing, it, it's about scale, baby. Like if one to one is pretty good, if you just divide the kingdom in half and have them go to town. Here's the thing though, and you're just and when you're a boy king, everything is so decadent, you're just chasing that first high, you get numb. And, you know, a court jester, funny at first, but then you need to see him beheaded and, you know, a fine fat goose, that's tasty, but then you need it soaked in the blood of your enemies. It's a, it's just a thing, you, you know? You your whole kingdom fight for your amusement. Yes, and they all died except for this one barefoot man. I am so stoked, like, retrospectively, because I, I was sort of on the fence about going to trapeze camp. But it super worked out because I came back and it's like, do you want a job? I'm like, yes. But I guess I could take up Usador on his offer and become the 40-year-old man that I am in actuality and start a quieter life. Yeah, you're at a crossroads. You're no longer a boy king, not yet a man king. 
It seems as if you have learned an important lesson from this trial you have been through, aging slowly without a kingdom to support thee. Mm. Thou art ready. I can cast the spell to turn you to your normal age. But know if this spell happens, if there's a voice to men spell, that this might be the end of the road. So weigh your pros, weigh your cons. Just make sure you're well, ready for this. While I think about this, let me open my flowing linen shirt. <laughs> also know that I myself am 42 years old. Mm. What? So look upon me. What? Yes. yes. No. Yeah. Oh, I could have. I thought you said you were in your 60s. <laughs> no, I'm 42 years old, no. so probably, like, this is sort of, if so you need to know of a, some context yeah. of what you're looking at. I mean, well, what, what okay, so as a boy king, mm-hmm. um, you know, a typical weekend, um, you know, would be... Quinces. Quinces, uh, pies featuring mm. flesh of people who wronged me. With oh. figs. With figs. Um, what is a typical weekend like for a 40-year-old man? What can I look forward to? Um, well, it depends. Like, on this world, like, for me, I can only speak for myself. Uh, you know, I sort of sleep in. And you uh, said, yeah, sleep apnea? Sleep apnea. <laughs> sleep apnea. And, I don't know, like, I kind of get out of bed slowly because my back kind of hurts. Um, and my knees definitely hurt. I have a difficult time, like, uh, showing fealty because, like, getting down on, on one knee oh, is boy. very painful. Sounds like a fucking bummer. Um, I can eat anything I want mostly because I'm not as invested in the consequences as okay. I should be. Yeah. Uh, I spend a lot nice. more time in the yeah. bathroom. Okay. Do you ever vape? You know, I, yes, I've often transformed him into a vapor. It's a fun thing to do on the weekend. Just turn your friend into a vapor for a little while. I'm yeah. not a fan of it. It's dope, especially if you're like at a music festival or whatever. Just turn into a mist or a vapor and just float around for a little while. Well, being a 40-year-old man does sound sad and lonely. and Oh, it is. Like you're just wandering and no one pays attention to you. And But well, you'll maybe be king. that's what I need. All right, Usador. Turn me into a 40-year-old man. Very well, then. Here. Um, Usador. Yes. Can, you, can you turn me into a 40-year-old man, too? I, uh, yes, I can. If you uh, both want to be 40. Oh, I guess I'll be a 40-year-old virgin. That's fun. Anyway. I really want to write a book about mushrooms. Here. Each one of you hold on to a... Self, d- <laughs> this will be self-published. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, dude. But it'll have, like, nice, like, that kind of spiral binding. Oh, cool. <laughs> a shinier than normal cover. <laughs> No doubt, Why no doubt. Why is the cover uh, so shiny? What is this printed on? I did my own illustrations, yeah, and the big publishing houses can't get with it. It's on them. Here, now, take this geode, and both of you put your fingers upon it, and then prepare to repeat after me. I want to grow up. I, I want, want to, to grow, grow up. up. I'm not a Usador kid. I'm, I'm not, not a Usador, Usador kid. kid. There's a million toys in the land of Foon that I won't play with. There's a, a million, million toys, toys in the land of Foon that, that I won't play with. And now you have done it. In but a moment's time, as you breathe in for the last time as a child, you will breathe out as an adult. <sighs> Whoa, this is 40? Uh, I'm 40. <laughs> wow, I'm 40. Yeah, wow, look oh, at boy. you. How does it feel, Your Majesty? I'm tired at six. It's six in the evening, and I'm tired. I might I hit the re- guys. I might hit the hay. I'm, I'm really forty. I really find myself caring about the lyrics in rock songs. Mm. Yeah, and I, you know, I, you had quite a few of those uh, squash-soaked uh, roses. You're gonna feel some acid reflux. Yeah, boy. Oh, boy. Hey, what's Wilco? I'm interested in Wilco now. <laughs> does anyone know what that is? I don't. Do you? No, I don't. I'll tell you in the oh, AM. Oh, boy. Oh, hey, uh, Chun, did you get any emails this week? Yeah, I got an email here. Uh, here's one from Caleb Phillips. It says, hey there, I'm not sure if you guys are still doing the show. What? That's are a we still- weird thing to ask. <laughs> are we still doing the show? Yeah. Okay. Um, you mean, are they, Are we man, still like in the middle of an people episode? People don't seem to be talking about it a lot these days. Yeah. <laughs> I wish there was a way to find out if a show still exists. Is there, is there a way, Arnie? Is it I guess well, only emailing the show. I right? know, yeah. If you... Um, I'm not sure if you guys are still doing the show as I was introduced to it recently. I do have a question for you though. I know the show is uh, improved. Mm. Improv? Improved. Uh, yeah, improved. Improved. But I'm wondering oh. how much improved tools you guys are using. I don't think it's improved at all. If anything, it's gotten far worse. Well, we changed locations. That's improving it. 
I, I, yeah, I think so, although we're working very hard to go back to our regular status quo. Mm-hmm. As a 40-year-old man, I'm having a lot more fun with podcasting now. Oh. This is nice. I might start several more. Oh, of course. Niche. Yeah. yeah. Maybe one where I go back and watch all of Twin Peaks. Oh, I would listen to that. Uh, uh, by, which, Twin of Peaks course, I mean mountain two mountains, two we, volcanoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's fun to just stare at two mountains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Although it kind of creeps me out to be fun. To be honest, <laughs> they're creepy mountains. Yeah, good with a it's hard to pie. know what balance of irony and sincerity to take in those mountains. Yeah, absolutely. I must confess something. The spell I have cast upon you is merely temporary to teach you a lesson. Breathe in again, as an adult. Now breathe out again. And uh, though, uh, fuck, I'm a boy again. I now give unto you one of my many secret names. I am Zoltar Bigius. Cool. <laughs> what, what do I do with that? <laughs> A big fucking deal. I wanted to be an adult uh, so I can fuck. <laughs> Come on, man. Secret name? This sucks. Hanks for Turn nothing. me back into a grown-up. I'm sorry, I can't. There's no way. The only way to age appropriately is through time. However, that time happens for you, dilated or no. Mm. But Born Born's still 40. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, how'd that happen? I guess I'm not one of the dilated peoples. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Well, this is going to change our dynamic. Maybe yeah. not that much. You know, whatever. Like, I still wear cargo shorts. Well, I got a glimpse of adulthood, and frankly, I, the quiet life of a 40-year-old man with no kingdom was appealing to me. Maybe I'll change my ways and stop being such a cruel boy king. Exactly. Now you're on the correct path. To live a life where you can be a glorious king who is kind to all of his subjects. And in time, if you act this way, more subjects will come to live under your banner. My friend Todd's kind of into it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Todd's cool. So you yeah. got Todd. So how many people okay. survived this Okay, well, slaughter? that's a handful. A handful. There's my old lady. Todd is one There's of my Todd. frothing buddies. There's the frothing, frothing buddies. And uh, some guys who are in a movie. Ooh. I mean, not in. No, they were they were watching a movie. Oh, gotcha. So you know they were they weren't around for the slaughter. Oh, I see. So you know there's a handful, and and you know there was you know kind of that handful would not stay loyal to me because of the cruel thing that I forced everyone to do. So uh, it's it's been a challenge. Yeah. Todd said he just wants to like check in on ground rules before he just signs back up. But I, I think as it's, long as you're chill, tell him. Like basically, can I tell you what he's looking for? Because mm-hmm. he gave me a list. Um. Shaved, no drama. Is that just is Craigslist listing for a roommate? <laughs> 420 friendly. Yeah. Well, now I think I will I will return and try and rebuild my kingdom. He also suggested a chore wheel. No, oh, that's I mean that's helpful. You, you don't want not, to be the only one unloading the dishwasher. Right. You are not friendly to the 420 subjects in your kingdom who all slaughtered each other. It's yeah, true. That's true. And I regret it. I will return to my kingdom and try to assemble the few people that are left. Guys, it Gladys. seems like for once we made some positive change in Foon. Like we, a guest came in who was kind of borderline evil, and maybe we've set him on a path towards good. We're still doing the show, and we've improved it. Yeah. And I'm going to finish my bullshit soup, and I'm going to poison every jam band in Foon. Oh, hey, come on, man. Not cool. I think we all learned that you don't have to be 40 to write your fucking mushroom book. Just start drawing and eating <laughs> mushrooms and seeing what happens. Yeah. Warp, warp, would you take us out with some trampoline tricks? Yeah, this one's this one's called the Flopsy Mopsy and Cottontail. Do you want me to hacky sack while he does it? Please. Please. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, his crank. His crank. Oh, his crank. Oh, right, right out of his pants. I didn't notice his crank was out this whole time. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh, Usador, do you have a crank repairing <laughs> spell? Here, I'll just hit him with this healing rock. A <laughs> uh, 40 year old crank is not as resilient as a 21 year old crank. I think that's something we've learned. Answer me this how many other podcasts in your feed brought up child genitalia in such a safe and playful manner? Just Radio Lab? Sounds about right. Usador the Accent, masquerading as a character, was played by Matt Young. Chunt the Collection of References was played by Adel Rafai. 
Dartholomew the Boy King was played by Jordan Morris. Show of hands, how many people thought it was Bill Arnett doing a voice? Trick question, Bill doesn't do characters. Check out Jordan Morris's new scripted comedy podcast, Bubble. Each episode includes a cavalcade of your favorite famous podcast voices. Oh, episode two features Arnie. Well, every Shyamalan has his The Happening. That's Bubble from Maximum Fun. Bormp, the au pair, was played by Jesse Thorne. Jesse is the founder of the Maximum Fun Network and the host of Bullseye, among other things. Jesse co-hosts the podcast Jordan Jesse Go along with Jordan Morris. Hello from the Magic Tavern is produced by Arnie Niekamp, Ryan DeGiorgi, and Evan Jakover. This episode edited by Tim Joyce. Production assistance by Garrett Schultz. If you'd like a little tidbit about the future, let me just say I've programmed the most powerful weapon in the bunker to punish unauthorized users by telling them unpleasant pleasant truths about themselves. Consider yourself teased. Hey, thank you for listening to Hello from the Magic Tavern. A great way to support the podcast is to join our Patreon. You'll get ad-free versions of our entire back catalog, including... All the Magic Tavern spin-offs like Offices and Bosses, I Am Spin, Tax, Shadow, Sit, there are a lot of them. There are two new exclusive bonus episodes every month, Discord, all kinds of stuff. To get more information, go to patreon.com slash magic tavern. That's patreon.com slash magic tavern.